Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the show. I'm Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. In today's episode, I want to talk about one of the best players who ever came from Europe, his rise and his unfortunate ending. I'm talking, of course, about Drazen Petrovic. But before we get to that, I want to give a quick shout out to my Patreons. Thanks a lot, you guys, for supporting the show. It's really appreciated. And I would say, enough said. Let's dive right in today's episode. I consider myself, you know, I'm being a little braggadocious here, but I consider myself the best shooter ever. But there's one guy that tops me. Mm -hmm. And he got underneath my skin. And the reason why he got underneath my skin is because a lot of times I couldn't understand what he was saying. And it was the late, great Drazen Petrovic. Oh, yeah. This guy, when he came off screens and he started to talk to either Jordan Pippen or Grant. Well, it's tough to contain all three of them at the same time. So when one gets away, there's that ball fake again, Bob. Did you see him? Free Scotty Pippen. That's twice in the game. Drazen Petrovic was my nemesis. I could not stand this guy, but... <laughs> To this day, I respect him because I think he is the best shooter I've ever seen in my life. Better than Ray Allen. The best shooter I've ever seen in my life. Well, rebound comes off. They give it to Petrovic, and he gets another three. So for them, he has scored eight consecutive points. He makes a steal on Jordan Pass. Jordan Pass with Aaron. All right, you guys, to start this video off, let me take you back to the beginning of the career of Drazen Petrovic. Drazen Petrovic was born on the 22nd of October in 1964 in Yugoslavia. Even before he entered the NBA, he became a basketball superstar in Europe as a teenager. After a year's military service in the military, he played for Sibona in Yugoslavia and became Europe's brightest rising star. The 6'5 shooting guard was special in the way he came around screens and made shot after shot from almost everywhere on the court. Also, the way he approached the game was typical for the Yugoslavian way back in the 1980s and 1990s. Whether you play 100% or you don't even enter the court. Just simple like that. Petrovic was scoring 38 points per game in the Yugoslavian league and sometimes would even drop 40 points, 50 points and even 60 points. He got a little bit bored and was ready for a new challenge. The Portland Trailblazers of the NBA had already used their third round pick on young Petrovic in 1986, but he decided to postpone his departure to the United States. In 1988, he signed with Real Madrid instead for around $4 million. We have to remember at that time, there was hardly any European players in the NBA. Europeans were titled as slow and especially soft. So for the Portland Trailblazers to draft Petrovic was kind of bold. For the following year, Petrovic would perform massive for Real Madrid and now officially be Europe's best player next to Avita Sabonis, of course. But his first season with the Portland Trailblazers was, let's say, a little bit underwhelming. The Portland Trailblazers had Clyde Drexler at the shooting guard position, who was considered to be the best shooting guard next to Michael Jordan. So Drexler would play heavy minutes while Petrovic was sitting on the bench, not receiving any playing time. Still, he was able to average 7.9 points per game in only 12 minutes, while shooting an incredible 46% from downtown. You could clearly see that Petrovic was ready to perform on the highest stage, but he hardly got the chance to show his talent. Still, the average fan could see that this European kid was for real and could really hoop. Uh, he, is he is now three for four full-time seasons with uh, the Yugoslavia national team before uh, joining Real Madrid prior to uh, last year. As I mentioned, having 28 points. Moved by Ewing going one direction and turning the other so quickly. And, and this quick moving first half, very few fouls have been called. Petrovic with a three-pointer. Three-point call. He has exploded in this first half. In his second season with the Portland Trailblazers, he received even less minutes, dropping to only eight minutes per game. 
Drazen was not only disappointed, but even considered going back to Europe. Then, on the 23rd of January in 1991, he joined the New Jersey Nets, which would turn out to be the perfect match. The Nets were a young team with some talented players, but now Drazen would finally receive 20 minutes per game for the first time in his young NBA career and quickly would make a name for himself to be the up and coming talent. Not only would he now average 12 points per game, but the Nets also started to improve drastically. In the following season, it got even better, and Draza would now move into the starting lineup, averaging 20 points per game and shoot an incredible 50% from the floor and 44% from downtown. Also, he would take on some of the biggest stars in the league. Just ask Michael Jordan and Reggie Miller. Now, since you know I had many NBA legends on my show and every time I talk about Drazen Petrovic, they all say the same thing. He was incredible, but he was also a player that could really get under your skin who would really drive you mad. This is, at the end, they're going to make some music and they got the offense on Grant. Oh, Grant Petro. Grant's got to be thrown out. Trying to get Derek involved on the offense. Okay, Blackman and Draz. It was just a matter of time, folks. It, it, you could have picked any duo. Yeah. Of course, we also can't forget Petrovic's incredible performance at the 1992 Olympics, where he was probably the one guy that was Nogli. ready to take Ball on the dream team. Nogli, you will answer to the first name Aramis if you see him on the street. Rook rebound comes off, they give it to Petrovic and he gets another three. So for them, he has scored eight consecutive points. He makes a steal on Jordan's pass. Jordan's pass was there. Petrovic again, another three. I almost felt sorry for the other team. I, number one, I knew they knew. I knew that they knew they had no chance to beat us going in. You could see it in their eyes. You could see them walking on the court. You could see it in their, their body language, everything. A couple of them I knew. I remember uh, Detlef Shrimp who had played for Seattle and I knew fairly well. I remember walking out at halftime, you know, I was limping, I wasn't playing yet, walking out at halftime with them. <laughs> and he was drag he was kicking rocks and dragging his head and I said, hey, you, you having fun out there, Detlef? No, no, this is not. The, uh, and pretty much that was the approach of every, every NBA guy uh, that we came across except for one and that was, uh, I thought Drazen Petrovic was the one unique person that, uh, felt he had a chance um, and played like it and uh, you know that was that was he was the one guy that stood out now we all know that unfortunately Drazen died in a car accident back in 1993 but this video is more about celebrating the greatness of Drazen Petrovic now how good was he then there was a reason why Reggie Miller considered him the best shooter ever he combined many incredible talents. It was not only his shooting touch, but also the way he got himself open. He could get hot like only a handful of players could. He really had that mamba mentality back in the 1980s and 1990s. Looking inbound to Petro for three. Followed every game. Every game we'd have a draws and watch. See what he did against you know everybody in the league. Kenny Anderson right side. Petrovich against Joe D. 15 footer. It falls. He dropped 30 on me so fast that night, and I'm telling you, I got a hand in his face. I'm right up on him, and he was just like a machine. Reggie Miller told me one time he really loved playing against Petrovich because he could talk trash in four languages. Petro! He had like 40 on Jordan, and he was going at Jordan like, yo, it ain't nothing. Like, give me the ball, I'm hot. I'm taking him. Right away, Petro sending a little bit of a message. Let's go after Jordan. Here's Petro. A couple of steps beyond for a stroke city. Now, that's what I knew. I said, yo, he's a ride. He was confident no matter what shot he took. He was like, just kick it to me for three, DC. Kick it to me. Drazen Petrovic. You gotta love this guy. I just started running back down the court with my hands up because it was money. Petro for three, got him! 44 for Drazen! 
on je osjećao da je ponovo rođen, da igra, da je prihvaćen, postao je već sretan je bio. New Jersey, svi su bili sretni, evo to, i mi smo bili sretni. Petro, great save! Petro, 4-3, got it! Petro, for three, got it! I close my eyes and I see this. He proved I could play there and I could help you win. Challenge. There's no money that can push you to play better. But if you challenge me, I'm going to kill you. That was him. This is as good as being home, he said. All right, you guys, that was it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do me a favor, like the video, and please subscribe to my channel. Also, if you want to hear podcasts with me and former NBA legends, please check out the Basketball Time Machine podcast on iTunes and on Spotify. All right, you guys, you all be healthy. Take care and goodbye.